Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, did his grandfather come back after he passed away to say his final goodbyes? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. And yeah, you can call in and share your real ghost stories with us or write in. At realghoststoriesonline.com, get access to the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, all that stuff. You can get it on Apple Podcast or Patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories. Tony and Carol Hughes with you on today's episode of the program. Let's uh, jump right over and get into our first call of the day at 855-853-4802. Hi, Hi this is Chase from Alabama, um, currently at work, so I apologize for any uh, noise in the background, but... I kind of just stumbled upon the podcast because I'm one that I love to listen to horror stories and all that while I work or just while I'm relaxing, doing whatever. My stories aren't exactly scary. They're more wholesome. I'm just going to hop right into it. So when I was in fifth grade, my papa died um, from a heart attack. He had already suffered, I think it was seven heart attacks throughout his life and it it hit me pretty hard because I was still a young young boy and I loved my granddad he was everything to me and when he died my grandmother was left alone in their old log cabin house that my great 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 grandparents had built back way long ago And I used to spend the night with them all the time. And this was like every other time I'd go and spend the night with them. My grandmother would go to sleep right around midnight. And I'd stay up and watch TV in their living room. And I was watching the TV and I just heard this noise from the kitchen. And let me just give you a layout. So when you walk in the front door, you have three doors you can go in. To the right is the living room. Forward is my dad's old bedroom from when he was a kid. And to the left is their bedroom. Well, you go into the living room, past the couch, and you can hit this long hallway that goes into the kitchen. Well, I look down that hallway because, again, just heard a noise down there in my little curious self look down there and I just see a faint figure walking down the hallway and it looks like my papa so I silently go silently call out saying papa and I just see the figure turn towards me and wave and then just disappear well fast forward a couple years and I think I was about, I want to say, 13. I was at home, and my dad had inherited a pocket watch of my papa's that he had had for many, 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 many moons. And it just kept ticking and ticking and ticking, even though the battery was dead. Like, the battery was out of it, and it just kept ticking. We had all gone to bed, and I'd say it was probably about 2 o'clock in the morning. And at that point, I'd just gotten an Xbox, so I was up late all the time. I I hear my door shut, and I get up and hurry to the hallway because I didn't know who had just opened my door. I look down the hallway, and a dark figure peeks into my sister's room. And it turns back to me, and I see that it's my papa. He walks up to me, puts his hand on my shoulder, and it just... With most ghost stories, you hear how it's cold and all that. But when he touched me, it felt really warm, like he was actually there. He said, I love you. 
I want you to live the best life you can. Then he walked past me and proceeded into my brother's room and looked in there. And it was kind of like he was saying his final goodbyes. And not two days later, the stopwatch stopped ticking. And it hasn't ticked ever since. <laughs> Put new batteries in it, hasn't worked. And it was kind of like that was him letting us know that he had finally been gone and gone over to the other side. Uh, which this had kind of made sense because after all those heart attacks, we had just decided he was too stubborn to die. <laughs> it was one of those things that it was really like it hurt. Like it didn't hurt, but it was really sad to me because I missed him so much. And I still think about him to this day. I wonder if he's ever proud of me. Uh, <laughs> I just hope that he's smiling down on me from wherever he is. But, um, yeah, I'm uh, sorry for the kind of sad tone of this. It kind of hit hard in my heart. But um, I love the podcast, and I've just been listening to it constantly. So please keep up the good work. Thank you, and keep up the good work. Thank you for sharing uh, that experience with us. It should be noted that there's a lot of pocket watches that don't uh, run on batteries. Uh, so I'm wondering if that was part of the pocket watch running, because a lot of them are, they're wind up, they're crank, they uh, they run by themselves. And I thought he had said it was batteries. Okay. And that, yeah, that it was still going, even though there wasn't a battery in it. That's that's what I'm curious about. Did he, did it yeah. need a battery though, or was he thinking it needed a battery? I don't know. Maybe he knew and I don't know. I'm just pointing that out. Now, it is interesting, though, that after that happened, the watch stopped never to restart again. Again, yeah. By trying. Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. And I think, you know, as I was listening to that, you know, as an adult, you listen to that. And I, I do find it really touching. And like grandma or grandpa was coming back to, you know, kind of say his goodbyes. And he caught him in the act. Mm -hmm. but, but as a child, that would be really, really hard to process that. Yeah. That would be like, there's grandpa because he loved him so much and he wants to have that connection. There he is. And I've missed you so much, but then he's gone. That would be a lot to process as a little kid. Well, yeah, because everything is new. And is this normal? Do the dead grandpas come back? Is this, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it looks far more paranormal when you're an adult, I think, than a child because you realize just how bizarre that is to have an experience of that nature. But as a kid, it might be like, well, I don't, I don't know. Everything's new to me. <laughs> and it'd be exciting. There's grandpa. What's he? Wait, he died. You exactly. know, I mean, his funeral. we had the conversation with my parents and because there would be that whole thing and parents explaining it to you and all of the things. Yeah. So that would be such, I think you would have so many weird emotions. So maybe looking back on it as an adult, I hope he does find that more heartwarming and mm -hmm. that, you know, Grandpa cared, and I think his grandpa would always be proud of him. Yeah. You know, he obviously was very connected to his grandkids. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Thank you for sharing that experience with us. All right. If you want to share your story, 855-853-4802 is the phone number to call to do just that. Of course, you can also write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. Get in on all the bonus material, advanced episodes, all that stuff. All you got to do is go to uh, Apple Podcasts and go to our premium page there, or you can go to patreon.com slash real ghost stories to get in, on it, get, get in on it there. Until next time, for Carol and Tony, thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs>